In this brief video, I would like to focus on games. Games in person and selection? Yes. Games can be used as gamification of serious games. Here I just provide a few ideas, important aspects of games in person and selection. More you will learn from Art Barnes' guest lecture. There are many procedures that aim at improving validity of instruments. Games can be seen as one of the means of attaining this goal to increase validity. Of course, there are other consequences of the use of games for personal selection. One of those consequences is engagement. If you apply games in personal selection, you may enhance engagement. To some extent, that can help also to increase validity of games on, of course, instruments. Games are simulation to, uh, of close to reality experience in order to test knowledge, skills, abilities, and other characteristics of candidates. For instance, attitudes. Serious games typically are used to identify skills. On the other hand, gamification can be seen as an aspect of gaming in non-game environment. For instance, it's personal selection. Instead of getting points, candidates may get badges and later on, based on the badges, uh, specific decisions can be made. Let's consider this example. You can Google a keyword America's Army. You will find this website and this website redirects you to a game. You can play this game on Steam. Think for a second why US Army would like to use games. What kind of goal they will attain by using games? It's pretty simple. If you apply games, then you can measure specific skills, attitudes and so on in more or less well-known environment to many of females and males, of course. You can test uh, how people behave in a team, how they react in a stressful situation, and so on. This method is a pretty neat uh, and sweet environment to assess different skills that can later on be used uh, by an army man, right? Also, that can be used as a very nice initial instrument to assess skills that can be later on assessed in the field, based on which uh, a higher decision can be made. Okay, let's focus on another aspect. Let's think for a second why this kind of games can play an important role in personal selection. Why games can be used in personal selection? First of all, one of the greatest benefits of games is that you can test interactions. So for instance, you can see how people behave in a team. Many companies, they want to hire team players and games enable to assess this kind of uh, skills uh, important for, for teams, leadership, uh, fellowship, and other elements of uh, behavior in a team. Something that can be important for an army as well. Or not an army, but also other companies, right? Also, when games are applied, you can see how people react when different goals are set and when different rules are set. So whether people comply or do not comply to rules, to some extent, if those goals and rules uh, simulate real-life rules and goals, you can also see, or at least expect, what's the probability that a specific person behaves uh, in this way in real life, as they behave in a game. In games, you can very easily control what candidates do, because uh, games are a pretty close environment, uh, and then you can see how candidates uh, behave. And then, based on behavior, you can conclude uh, a level of traits. 
Also, you can see how candidates react to feedback about their performance, how they adapt, how they can adjust uh, given um, the feedback they receive. So you can see how they react to positive feedback or negative feedback. Also, games can be seen as stimulation. So you can see how people respond to dif different types of uh, stimuli. If you plan that specific type of stimuli indicates um, or stimulates specific type of behavior that can later on be evaluated as a signature of a, of a trait, then within the game you can implement many different types of uh, stimuli, right? And then evaluate specific trait in multiple ways under different conditions. Thus, as a consequence of this simulation, you can see how people make decisions and also how they do behave uh, if not everything is certain. Finally, games is a good environment for application of adaptive testing. Adaptive testing, as you probably know, is a procedure where uh, we can follow steps to test effectively level of uh, traits. Let's say that you want to see how a person behaves in a stressful situation. Adaptive testing rule says that you should start with the medium level of stressful situation. If a person is able to deal with the stressful situation, then more stressful situation would be applied, and so on. If in the first case, a candidate is not able to respond properly to medium level of stressful situation, then less stressful situation would be applied in order to assess uh, ability to deal with stress um, by specific candidates. Thus, this adaptive testing is uh, potentially can be used in this kind of game environment. Finally, let's take into account issues, problems related to the application of games into personal selection. First of all, is how to target audience. Who should be in the audience? So, who should participate in those games? People with experience in games or both groups, people without and with experience in games. Also, how lengthy should be a game? Let's consider that your reference point is a situation judgment test with 15 different scenarios. Would you consider all those scenarios as a part of a game? Uh, if that would result in a five hour game? Probably not. Then it's really important to take into account also this fact. Then what type of game should be used in order to assess traits, horror game, military game, or pacifistic game. How to evaluate reactions? Shall all reactions be taken into account as a signature of a trait, or maybe just a set of them? If uh, just a set, then five uh, reactions, ten reactions, hard to guess. Also, if you want to see how a candidate reacts toward feedback, and how much feedback should be given? Five times negative feedback, maybe ten times negative feedback, who knows, right? Also, the final thing is related to validity. So, for instance, you can take into account equivalence. So, if your reference point is a test of 15 items situation judgment test, then if you would like to include less scenarios in your game, then the question is that would be the game equivalent version of situation judgment test. Then how to compare those versions. And finally, costs. Developing a game can be really expensive. Also, analysis of data that comes out of the game can be also expensive. Those are the important issues. If you'd like to more know about games, please participate in a Art Barnes guest lecture. That will happen on Monday. Thank you for your attention.